Hey y'all, I'm Angela Walters from the Midnight Quilt Show, and in this bonus video, I'm gonna give you three tips for preparing your t-shirts for a t-shirt quilt. Then you can watch the whole quilt come together on an episode of the Midnight Quilt Show, and even get the free quilt pattern designed by yours truly. Tip number one, after you've assembled all those special t-shirts, go ahead and measure the graphics before you start cutting. You'd hate to start cutting out the first 10 only to realize the last couple shirts are too big. Now in this quilt, I've already cut them out, but what I would suggest doing is look at the quilt, look at the block, and measure it out to make sure that they're all gonna fit within the same size. Once you've decided the perfect size, see if you can find a ruler that's exactly the right size. So for our quilt, we're making 12 and a half inch squared blocks, and this works perfect because I have a 12 and a half inch square ruler, and that's gonna allow me to find the perfect placement and get that logo as centered as I can. It's not always gonna be perfectly in the center because sometimes that collar gets in the way, but at least I can see where it will be within the square. Now, if you can't find the right size ruler, because that always seems to happen, try to look for one that's bigger and then use washi tape to mark out the area that you're gonna cut. So if I were gonna make this an 11 inch square, I could put washi tape just outside the 11 inch lines so I can easily preview where that logo will go. The tape doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It's not there to help me cut. It's only there to help me find the perfect placement of my logo within that area. But since we're going with 12 and a half inch blocks for the pattern, I don't need the washi tape, so I'm gonna peel that off. If you're not sure if it's gonna look good, you can use a marking utensil of some kind to draw along the outside of the ruler so you can audition it without the ruler in place. Although I'm feeling pretty good with the placement of this, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick cut and we'll see how it turns out. Before I get cutting, I wanna show you that I have interfaced my shirt. I've ironed on interfacing that's slightly bigger than the block size I wanna make it, and that interfacing is gonna help keep it stable while I cut and sew with it. On the episode of The Midnight Quilt Show, you'll see this in more detail. Now that I have my shirt interfaced and I have the perfect size, I'm gonna cut out that t-shirt. But what happens if the logo isn't working with the size that you have? You know, sometimes those shirts have really large logos. Well, if the logo is really big, you have a couple options. Looking at my t-shirt quilt here, you can creatively decide what you wanna highlight. This whole shirt was much larger than the 12 and a half inches, and I decided to place it where I could see the name of the band, even if that meant I had to cut off some of the sun. So that means that we have to be a little creative with our editing or cropping of the shirts. You don't always have to cut out the graphics so that it's square. With this shirt, it was so large that it just happened to fit on the diagonal. So sometimes you can get a little creative with your ruler. As long as the whole block ends up the same size, it's gonna be fine. Even if the graphic is a little skewed on there. Now, if your logo is way too small or your shirt's too small and you don't have enough fabric to fit in that block, you can actually take t-shirt material from the back, piece it together to make the block large enough. Ultimately, it doesn't matter how you get to it, just make sure that all your shirts are the same size. And lastly, as you start to either iron or quilt your beautiful t-shirt quilt, you might notice that some of the shirts will have a heavy, thick emblem. Be aware of that thick paint because if you quilt through it, it can actually smear it, or if you iron it, it can also leave a little bit of decoration on your ironing board, which is not a good thing. Now this particular paint is kind of thin, so I felt it was okay to quilt over it, but I slowed down, took my time. However, if it was really thick, glossy, I felt like a little worried about that. What I would do is instead of quilting directly over the paint, I would work my way around it so that I didn't actually go through it. It might not seem like it, but as you're quilting, your needle actually heats up and it melts the paint and can smear it out into the background. This is something I know from experience. And there you have it, three tips for making your t-shirts look perfect on your t-shirt quilt. Don't forget, you can get this free pattern and watch the episode of The Midnight Quilt Show where I put this whole quilt together. You can find the information about that in the description box below. Well, happy quilting, I'll see you soon.